Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, everyone. This is your English teacher from at Tamayus Model School for Boys. In this video, inshallah, we are going to study uh, lessons four and five from unit nine. Uh, in this video, inshallah, we have to study grammar lessons, uh, which uh, will be about the following. Uh, first of all, we have to study the key vocabulary of the lesson. Then we have to revise models. Then we will talk more specifically about reported speech and uh, this form, which is adjective plus two plus verb infinitive. This form in English, how can we use it? Uh, we have to uh, discuss this uh, more in this video, inshallah. So let's get started with vocabulary of the list. The first word that we have today is auction. Auction, as you can see from uh, the picture or the video, uh, we have some people gathering in one place in an auction. Uh, if I say auction, it means a public sale, public sale in which pe uh, people or uh, uh, traders buy some goods which are sold are the highest uh, value. So who pays more gets the deal. This is called auction. Okay, so repeat after me, auction, which is called a public sale. If you have to get the deal, so you have to pay more. Uh, the second word, which is shipping. Shipping, of course, it's a very uh, popular nowadays. We use shipping when we, of course, when we uh, transport goods by sea or any other means. So shipping by sea, shipping by plane and so on. Transporting goods uh, from a place to another. Uh, so this is called shipping. Of course, it's a very important word. We also have some other words like uh, complimentary, repeat after me, when something is given complimentary, it means it is given for free. So repeat after me, complimentary. Next, login. Login, uh, if I say login, I mean the process of starting a computer system. So if you want to log in to the computer, it means start your account on the computer system. The next, word which is tax 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 when you pay for the government this is called tax okay why do we pay for the government okay to uh, of course we pay for public services so this is called tax so repeat after me again complimentary login tax auction and shipping Okay, let's have a look at these words in meaningful sentences. The first one, for example, the hotel offers a complimentary breakfast and lunch. So you don't have to pay for the breakfast or lunch. It's complimentary. It's for free. If you have forgotten your login, uh, login ID, click this link. For example, we always see this when you forget your login or when you forget your passport if you have forgotten your login id click this link some websites offer free shipping on orders over 50 dollars for example so if you buy something which is over 50 you can get free shipping it means free delivery the horse will be put up for public auction so who is going to pay more will get the horse this is called auction the last sentence more taxes should be put on cigarettes to reduce smoking one of the means or ways to reduce smoking is to put more taxes on cigarettes okay so these are the words of the list now, please open your book, page 70. Here we have models. Again, as I said, models, they give meaning to the verb. 
So when I say have to and has to, so what do we mean by have to and has to? Of course, we are talking about something which is necessary to do. Necessary, it means very important. If I have to do something, it means it is necessary to do because it's low, for example. Okay, so here we have two forms, have to and has to. Have to comes with I, I have to, you, you have to uh, work hard, we, we have to work hard, they, also they have to. But if we talk about singular uh, subject like he, she, or it, here we have to use the word has to. He has to, she has to, it has to. Okay, so has to and have to, both of them are followed by the verb infinitive. I mean the verb without any additions. The negative of have to and has to, uh, they will be don't have to and doesn't have to. They are very important. Be careful when we use have to and has to. Let's have some examples. I have to go home now. I have to go home now. It's too late. I have to go home now. It's too late. She has to go home now. It's too late. Be careful. I have, but she has. This meal comes with a Pepsi. You don't have to pay. It's complimentary. You don't have to pay. This meal comes with a Pepsi. He doesn't have to pay. He doesn't, but you don't. You have to try this recipe. It's delicious. We have to try this uh, recipe. It's delicious. He has to try this recipe. It's delicious. You have to, but he has to. Okay. This is about has to and have to. In this exercise, we have to uh, know the difference between have to, shouldn't, and must. Which one is necessary? Which one means I have a strong feeling about something? Which one means advice or suggestion? Okay, so you have to match the words or the models with their meanings from one, two, three. Take your time. I'll be back in half a minute. Okay, of course, when we have uh, to look, uh, let's look back to this, have to, does it mean that something is necessary or I have, or I feel strongly about this, or this is my advice? Yes, excellent. When I say something, something is necessary, so people have to work. This is, of course, uh, like law or a rule, so have to. When we say uh, should or shouldn't, this is, of course, piece of advice. When I give you a piece of advice, I say you should or you shouldn't. You shouldn't waste your money. This is my advice for you. The last one, when I say I strongly feel something about this, so you must be careful with your money. You must be more careful with your money. So this uh, when I say, I feel very strongly about this. Exercise so two, you have to write sentences using one of the models from the list. We have some models here, must, should, have to, mustn't, shouldn't, and don't have to. We have to rewrite the sentences using the models. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the first one, the sentence is, 
it isn't a good idea to carry lots of money around with you. It's not a good idea to carry lots of money around with you. Okay, it means if something is not a good idea, it means I say you should or you shouldn't. What do you think? Yes, you shouldn't carry lots of money around with you. You shouldn't carry lots of money around with you. Sentence B. It's wrong. Wrong to take things from shops without paying. When something is wrong, it means you... Excellent. You mustn't. You mustn't take things from shops without paying. C. It isn't necessary to pay for these drinks. Something is not necessary. Of course, we studied if something is necessary, I say have to. But if it is not necessary, so it is negative of have to, so you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay for these drinks. They are complimentary. I mean, they are free. Sentence D. If you earn money, I think it's right that you pay tax. You pay tax. So if you earn money, you... Excellent. You have to pay tax. If you earn money, you have to pay tax. It's a good idea to put your money in a bank. When I say it's a good idea, it means you should. I'm giving a piece of advice. You should put your money in a bank. Sentence F, it's necessary to use a personal login for the bank website. It's necessary to use a personal login for the bank website. Of course, it means you must. You must use, it means I strongly feel about this. Uh, you must use a personal login for the bank website. Now it's time to talk about reported speech. It's very important uh, rule in English how to change a sentence from direct speech into indirect or reported speech. First of all, let's have a, a brief idea about reported speech when we watch this video about uh, this rule. Again, it's called reported speech. I'll be back in a minute with, uh, let's have a look at this video.
After watching the video about reported speech, we have understood that we can report what people say. We can report what people say using a reporting verb. For example, he said, he told me, he asked me, and so on. This is called a reporting verb. Then we add the word that, which is optional. You can use it or you can omit it. So it's called that. He said that or he said. Then we have to make changes to the speaker's actual words. This is uh, an example for direct speech. When I say, Ahmed, I'm very busy. The words in red are the actual words, the direct speech of Ahmed. Ahmed, I'm very busy. If you want to change the sentence into report speech, you make like this, Ahmed said that, or Ahmed said he was very busy. Be careful, I am, change it into he was. How to make this? Let's have a look at the pronouns change. When we change the pronouns, it will be like this. I change it into he or she. It depends on the speaker, male or female. We change it into what, uh, they. You. It depends also as he, she, or they, and so on. These are the changing pronouns in report speech. Write them down. You have to memorize them. Of course, it depends on your understanding of the rule. Also, you have to change the tense of the, uh, of the sentence. For example, if the simple present is used in a sentence, for example, he said, I eat cheese. You have to change the present symbol into past symbol. He said that he ate cheese. Have a look at the green words. Here is eat. We change it into past symbol ate. Present continuous also is changed into past continuous. He said I'm eating cheese. He said that he was eating cheese. Present perfect change it into past perfect. I have eaten cheese. He said that he had eaten cheese. Past perfect, uh, past simple uh, will be changed into past perfect. I ate cheese. He said that he had eaten, had eaten cheese, had eaten cheese. Past perfect stays as it is, no changes. Of course, had eaten, it will become had eaten. Will, it will be changed into would. I will eat cheese. He or she would eat cheese. I can eat cheese, change, uh, change it into could. She could eat cheese. So these are the verb changes in the reported speech. We have also other changes. Uh, have a, a, a look at this one. We have also other changes like time and place expressions. The word here becomes there. Now it becomes then. Yesterday becomes the day before. Last week becomes the week before. A year ago, it becomes a year before. Next, the following, tomorrow, the next or the following day. Today, we have to change the word today into that day. Tonight, we change it in, into that night. In one hour, it means that we have to make it one hour later. This becomes that and these becomes those. Write them down, memorize them. They are very important. These are called time and place expressions. Here is an example of reported speech. The direct speech is, I need to see the, uh, the x-ray of the patient. I need to see the x-ray of the patient. If we change this sentence into reported, or if we report this sentence, it becomes, the doctor said that he needed to see the x-ray of the patient. We used, uh, reporting verb like said we used the word the word that we changed the pronoun i into he 
we changed the verb tense need into needed and we completed the sentence next it's going to be ready in a minute so the nurse said that it was it is it becomes what it was going to be ready in a minute okay so he said or the doctor said that he needed to see the x-ray and it's we changed the word it's into it was it was going to be ready another example you are too tall you are too tall who is going to report this for me huh? i'd like you to answer this sentence to report this one yes excellent it becomes like this Selman, for example in a name Selman said to me or told me you are tall you are tall this is reported or direct of course it's direct so when we change it into reported speech it becomes Selman told me that i was i was too tall you are too tall change it into i was too tall next Muna, my brothers will go to the beach for walking. So when we report this sentence, it becomes Mona said that her brothers, Mona is a girl, so I say her brothers, will change it into would, will go becomes would go to the beach for walking. And this is uh, another one, Henry, I can speak German and Spanish. I can speak German and Spanish. If change it into report speech, it becomes Henry said that he, Henry is a boy, he could not can, of course, he could speak German and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Another uh, rule today in this lesson, this form, it's a very common form when I say adjective plus two plus verb infinitive. Let's have a look at this uh, examples. Of course, it's very important and common pattern in English. When I say it's hard to, it's hard to imagine, it's hard to answer, it's hard to score a goal, it's hard to speak French and so on. It's hard to imagine the world without money. It's difficult to guess what will happen. It's impossible to do this project in 24 hours. It's important to take a break twice a day. And it's exciting to be here. Again, using it's plus adjective plus two plus verb infinitive. So this is a common pattern in English. Here is an ex exercise to practice this pattern when I say it's hard to imagine the word without money. This is the example. Next, we have four sentences. You have to complete these beginnings. Read the beginning, then you have to complete this pattern. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the first one. It's hard to imagine, of course, uh, what will happen at the end of the movie. For example, it's hard to imagine our world without technology and so on. So hard to imagine. Sentence two, it's impossible to believe that uh, who can complete. Yes, it's impossible to believe that my brother could invent a machine. I can't imagine this, or it's impossible to believe that. Three, I, um, sorry, I find it difficult to understand. I find it difficult to understand physics, for example. I can't uh, understand. It means it's difficult to understand. I'm lucky to have, uh, who can complete this sentence? Yes, I'm lucky to have a friend like you. I'm lucky to have a student like you. I'm lucky to have a teacher like you in my school. This is the end of our lesson. Thank you very much.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Inshallah, see you in other videos. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.